Or of Whip Wednesdays. If you're new, welcome. The Whip of Whip Wednesday stands for Work in Progress. These are live sessions that I host here on the Crafty Gemini Facebook page as well as the Crafty Gemini YouTube channel where I do a demo of something, work on different projects, and I answer your questions live on camera. Now they're always recorded so wherever you're watching this, if you're unable to stay for the whole show, you can just click the same link and you will be able to watch the entire replay or recording. Okay, let's go ahead and make sure everything is working fine. Hey, Jesse. Okay, we got some friends tuning in from the UK. She says it's 5.30 p.m. here. Awesome. Um, Patricia's tuning in from Pennsylvania. I see Kathy from New Jersey's in the house. Um, hey, Barb, tuning in from California. We got Margie from Wisconsin, Linda from South Florida. It is, um, we are like under thunderstorm stuff going on, so it's like sunny right now, and then the rain will just pour, and then it'll stop, and it's done that like three times in the past five minutes. So hopefully the internet stays on so that we can continue our live demo today. And let's see, hey, Starlin, tuning in from New Orleans. My chat is working today, everybody. Last week I had issues for Fiber Friday, I had issues, and now I don't. So glad that technology is on my side again. Okay. Let's go ahead and get started. So I'm just going to hold this up real quick and I'll talk for a bit before we get into the demo. So the demo I'm going to be doing today is on how to make my uh, Samosa quilt block, which is the one featured in this quilt. Now I hosted an online free video series of a quilt along um, several years ago for this block. So if you like the demo and you kind of pick up some tips and stuff and you think, hey, I want to make a bigger quilt with that same quilt block, definitely check the link in the description box below of the YouTube video or or here in the Facebook chat as well. And we have a link on where you can find, uh, the, it's, I think it's a six part video series where I walk you through every single step, tons of tips and tricks, okay? So today, because I've been working on a bunch of projects, some of you may not know that I have a um, the Crafty Gemini Bag Maker subscription box program. Um, it, we released it earlier in the year. It's already closed off. We're coming up on the third project. It was like three months at a time. And so because we've been making a bunch of different projects, I find that I'm building up a lot more fabric scraps than I would like. Um, I tend to purge and donate them often because I just get overwhelmed with having so many fabric scraps. Does that happen to you? If you're a quilter, you probably live for that. But um, when I make quilts and then I make bags and then I make clothes, they all have scraps. <laughs> some bigger than others, some smaller than others, some stretch, some don't, and it drives me mad. So I decided, you know what, with some of these off cuts of yardage, they're not like small strips yet, but off cuts of yardage like you know 10 inches or 12 inches I have a third of a yard left from a project stuff like that I figured I'd make some different uh, samosa quilt blocks using my 10 inch slicer ruler so the ruler we'll be using is this ruler that I designed I can't believe it's been I think over seven years now so this is a ruler that I designed to be specifically used with 10 inch by 10 inch square pieces of fabric because I had an online quilt club at the time and a lot of my students were saying we're collecting these 10 inch by 10 inch square packs of fabric but when you go to pull up a pattern on what you can use that fabric for it would say like grab one stack and then three and a half yards of a neutral background fabric or two more yards of something else and so I wanted to design a ruler where if you had those pre-cut stacks you could just grab the stack my 10 inch slicer ruler a rotary cutter and mat and start cutting up to make a more visually interesting quilt than just sewing all the squares together Okay, so I do have a video library of a, punch, a bunch of different um, quilt blocks and also even zippered pouches that you can make with my 10 inch slicer ruler. So we'll put that link, or it already is, in the video description box. We can pop it in the chat for y'all. If you've been following me for a long time, chances are you have one of these. But if you're new here, you might learn something new. So let's go ahead and swap them to this over the shoulder camera. I'll show you the quilt block in the quilt and then I'll gather up my cutting mat and all my supplies so I can start cutting up some of my fabric scraps. So here is the Samosa quilt block. Now in the video series, it's, again, it's a six part free video series. I share with you how to make some this way. We, um, I share tips on how to make the mirror image. And then as you can see, this is the little, what I call the little Samosa chunk. If you've ever eaten Samosas, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so this little triangular chunk here, you see how on this quilt block it's featured up top. And on this one, it's the same shape different fabrics, but then the little triangle chunk is on the bottom here. And so you'll see the way that the blocks turn out, they're slightly rectangular, which is fine. Um, and I'll explain why as we make one, but 
I just, you can rotate it and have these little peaks going in the same spot. So it can be like here. This one could have been flipped this way and had it here. And so you'll see in the video series that as I was using my design wall to kind of position my quilt blocks, I decided, you know what? I'm going to flip every other one just to add a little bit more visual interest since these are super fun, bright colors. And this was made from a 10 inch by 10 inch square pack of uh, pre-cut fabrics. Now, you know that if you get those packs, you're paying a premium because those stacks are cut in the US. So you got to pay US labor prices to cut them up into those sizes. And so if you're already paying a premium for pre-cuts, I figure why not use as much or all of the fabric. And so that's why I designed that 10 inch slicer ruler. So I'm going to show you on this one, how we use it to make these super fun blocks. And it's just, it's a quick quilt. If you need a charity quilt, a quick baby quilt, actually with one stack, I, I think this was half of usually the stacks include maybe 40 to 42 squares with half of that you can make a baby quilt so it's not too bad even though those those pre-cut stacks can be a little pricey you can make two quilts two baby quilts at least out of it look how fun y'all know i love my bright colors okay so that is the samosa quilt yes it has not been bound i know it has been three years no judging okay so let's start i'm gonna grab uh, my Martelli roundabout mat. This is a three part rotating mat and ironing board. We, th I think we only have two left in the shop. They go pretty quickly. Whenever we restock, we usually restock between 10 and 15 of them and they go super fast. Cause I love to feature them on whip Wednesdays. So the bottom has almost like, um, a velvety finish to it, but it rotates. Then the second layer is this, um, ironing surface and little ironing mat. And then that goes in the middle. And then we have the cutting mat, the, the self-healing cutting mat that I, I use on top. So you can see that everything rotates. So whenever you're using a ruler that features some type of a symmetrical edge or a curve or something that you can like hold down and turn, or you make one cut and then you need to turn it 180 degrees and cut again, it's expensive. It is. The first time I saw it, my friend Latifa put me on it and I was like, girl, no a hundred something dollars for a cutting mat. And then I went ahead and got it because I was cutting a lot of curves with her um, clammy ruler. And then I was like, oh yeah, this is a must have. So if you tune in on Wednesdays, you know that I pretty much always have this here on my big table. So here we go. We're gonna start off, and this is usually how I do them, whether it's 10 inch squares from a pre-cut stack or I cut my own yardage. This obviously, this is why I'm doing it. I have a bunch of scraps left over, like third yard cuts and stuff like that. I just cut 10 inch strips from yardage and then I go in and sub cut them to 10 inches. So if you're using like designer quality or most quilting cottons, even like the lower quality stuff, they're usually going to be between 40 and 45 inches in the width, meaning from selvage to selvage. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, whoop, this is a cut. Let me grab this here to show you. So say this from selvage, to the other selvage, if you open it up the whole way from here all the way across to here, that's usually between 40 and 45 inches. So if you divide that width by 10, you know that even if it's 40 or 45, you'll be able to get four, 10, 10, 10, and 10, right? So 10 inch squares, you'll be able to get four of them out of a 10 inch wide chunk by the width of the fabric. Okay. So if you have yardage that you just can't figure out what to do with, and you want to crank through it, go ahead and cut those 10 inch uh, strips and then sub cut them down to 10 inch squares. Like I've done here. Now, when I'm working with scraps and really, even if I'm not, unless it's like a pre-cut stack, if you have a pre-cut stack of those 10 inch squares, the designer, the fabric manufacturers, they already did that work for you. If they're already packaged up in a bundle like that, chances are everything matches. Okay. So you can really just open up the pack and start playing with the different fabric combinations. They usually include a good balance there of like small, medium, and large scale prints, some blenders, maybe even some solids, right? It all depends on the collection. And so, <laughs> oh, Yolanda, you're funny. She says, Vanessa, ma'am, your long arm machine is judging you. We won't have to do it. <laughs> okay. I need to do some more on there, but actually this is one of the reasons why I'm doing this samosa one. If I don't end up turning this into a floor pillow, I am going to throw together a little, um, uh, like a baby size crib quilt. And then that way in a future whip ones that we can jump back on my handy quilter moxie long arm to quilt it. Cause I haven't done that in a while. All right. So if you have 10 inch by 10 inch squares, here is what you want to do. You either cut them yourself or you pulled out a pre-cut, uh, a stack. Check and double check both your measurements if you cut your own 
and those pre-cut squares. Oftentimes, you'll find that they don't actually measure 10 inches square. So usually they're cut like a ton of them at once, like a really high, high stack. And if you've ever cut multiple layers of fabric, you know that like as you're cutting, sometimes it shifts and moves. So you might have a smaller one in the stack. You might have bigger ones, right? Because everything kind of shifts. So on this Martelli mat, you can see that the solid aqua all the way around has a 10, 10, 10, 10. I have a perfect 10 inch square right here. So really quick, you can just double check and place your fabric squares right on it. And these I cut um, and they measure 10 inches. So we'll go with that. If you have a, uh, are using pre-cuts and you place it on here, you know, they usually will have, not all the manufacturers make it like this, but usually most of them will have the little pinked edges. And so don't think that at the base of those little zigzaggy edges is the 10 inches. It should be at the top. So like where the peaks are. That's what you want to use to measure because sometimes you're like, oh my gosh, it's way shorter. Sometimes they're bigger, sometimes they're smaller. But luckily, when we're using the 10 inch slicer ruler, especially for the samosa quilt block, you're going to trim it up at the end. So you'll have like a little bit minimal waste, and each block only uses two cuts and two seams. So they whip up super quickly if you start off with your 10 inch square stacks, okay? Um, Maria's asking if I've made this with a five inch slicer. I have not. That would be cool to do. The only thing is, again, that the quilt block, and I'll grab one here because I whipped one up for y'all. Here's a finished one. So we have a light background and a darker, more poppy pink color here. Each block features two seams. So we have one seam going here, and then the other seam that pieces together this one to this one. So when I say it features two seams and two cuts per block with the 10 inch slicer, they whip up super quickly. If you're starting off with a five inch square piece of fabric to begin with, and we make two cuts and sew two seams, oh, they're so small. I mean, they're not tiny, but they're just gonna take a whole lot more squares for you to get a big enough quilt. For me, I'm a little bit impatient. So I rather do the same thing, especially if you're going for the look of the samosa quilt block, I rather just do it with the larger ones. Um, the blocks, if you're, and, and this is what I have found. When I use pre-cut squares, 10 inch squares, I end up trimming my blocks to nine inches this way by nine and a half. Because oftentimes they're like a little bit shy of the actual 10 inches. When I cut them myself, um, assuming that I've pressed my fabric nice and flat, I can cut them more exact to the 10 inches square. And so I find that if I use a scant quarter inch seam allowance, my blocks end up getting squared to nine and a half inches this way by nine and three quarters, okay? Yes, they are rectangular dimensions. I don't know why, but I, I get this all the time when we're doing stuff with the 10 inch slicer. Because you're cutting into an already square piece of fabric and then you need to sew a seam, there's no way that it's going to end up automatically square. So you have to understand the way that this is broken down. And I'll point it out on this block so that way you can see how it comes together as we start cutting these ones and making a block. So this to here, if we're looking at just this chunk here, okay, it is the exact shape of my ruler, okay, minus the seam allowance that got sewn right there. But it's that shape. So what happens? This was not cut shorter it started off as 10 inches because my square was 10 inches, okay? Here you can see that it is short now because I've already trimmed this one up and cleaned it up. On this side, okay, we're eating up. That's why the block ends up being rectangular is because you're eating up quarter inch and quarter inch here. So you're shrinking the pieces that you cut this way, okay? So that automatically is going to elongate it because this section of the block does not have a seam in it going this way, all right? And then this one does. So you're shrinking it this way a little bit, okay? So don't freak out. Don't think that it has to be a square. But if you want to trim your block up to a square, you can do that. You're just going to have a little bit more waste, right? So if I turned it this way and wanted, let me grab my other ruler, my 5 inch by 10 inch ruler. This one ends up measuring here, the 9 and a half, okay? And this way... Oh, it's nine and a quarter, my bad. So nine and a quarter by nine and a half, not nine and three quarters. But 
if you wanted this to be whatever the shortest measurement is, what did I say this was? That was nine and a half. If this is nine and a quarter, I can make nine and a quarter inches square, just shave off a little bit more, right? Just shave off another bit from here to make them perfectly square. For me, one, it's an extra step. Two, you're wasting fabric. I would just leave it in there. And what you end up getting is what we oftentimes uh, want in a quilt anyways, is a quilt that's longer than it is wider. So leave all those additional little quarter inches and half inches in the height of the block and it works out fine. But if you absolutely feel like you need a square or maybe you're mixing and matching them up with other square blocks that you've made of a different design, then totally, you know, feel free to trim them up. Okay, um, Bonnie's asking, will you be getting more of the sewing machine? So she's asking about the sewing machine that I use on Whip Wednesdays. We're sold out. Um, there's still some supply issues going on, but we do have an order in. Um, we're hoping by the end of the month. Uh, so if, as soon as we get them, though, we will list them back in stock. What you can do is head over to the website at craftygemini.com shop. And under the Juki LB5020, if you go, like if you're gonna go buy the machine, you'll see that it says sold out and it has a wait list button. And this applies to all the, uh, the products on our website. If something is sold out, you can click the button there, enter your email address. And as soon as it's restocked, the system will send you out an email letting you know, hey, they've restocked this product and then you can go back in and buy it, okay? All right. So let's go ahead and make a block, finally. So I usually like to sort out my fabrics once they're you know, cut to the 10 inch by 10 inch. I like to sort them out by lights and darks. I like visual interest. I like high contrast blocks. And what that means is that when I'm considering putting these two fabrics next to each other, I need to be able to spot the light and the dark fabric from the combo, okay, instantly. So if we're looking at these two and you ask yourself, which is the light and the dark? I mean, it's obvious, this is the light fabric and this is the dark, okay? Whereas, if I were to use something like this, you can kind of still notice that this would be the light and this the dark, but they're so close in color value that this, it would work, right? Because this is still obviously the light and obviously the dark, but there's not enough contrast for me. I don't really care about the color on the color wheel. Is it a complementary color? Is it a cross from this color on the... I don't deal with none of that when I'm picking out color combinations for any of my projects, really. What I do is I look at it. If one quickly and instantly plays as the light and the other as the dark, for me, it goes. It's enough high contrast that it's going to make a visually appealing project regardless of where it's featured, okay? And that is how I pick colors. I don't really go by colors. I just, I like all the colors. I like anything funky and wild and bright. And so I get a lot of times when I make projects, people are like, how would you, I would have never thought to put those fabrics together. And I'm like, I'm just looking at lights and darks. I don't even bother to deal with the color. Like if I, if it looks good to me and I like it, the color is the last thing I care about. I just want that pop. Okay. All right. So make sure here okay good we're good so now let's go ahead and start cutting these so with the 10 inch slicer and with anything else really you can stack your fabric especially since they're they should be the same size you can stack them up however some people don't feel comfortable cutting through the multiple layers so just be careful if you're kind of new to using a rotary cutter and you don't feel safe cutting through multiple layers uh you can also just cut them one at a time no big deal i am gonna cut them both at the same time because we're gonna make a block out of these two. And so when you line them up like this, both of them pretty sides facing up, both of the fabrics, I have one light, one dark. After I make the cuts here, the pieces that will result from these two cuts I'm going to make, I just, I'm gonna swap out one piece from each and this is enough to make two blocks, okay? So we're just swapping them and I'll show you what I mean. So let's grab the 10 inch slicer. So you can see that we have like an asymmetrical kind of slanted angle here. It's not a true bias, but it is a slant. And then you have the measurements that increase from right to left and then from bottom to top and the measurements go across the top too. The lines on my rulers on both, well on all three, my 10 inch slicer, I have the little baby sister version of this called the five inch slicer, which is designed uh, for you to use and make different projects and quilt blocks with five inch by five inch square pieces. It's a little teensy one like that. We also have that in stock. But my other ruler that I like to use a lot is a five inch by 10 inch ruler. And all the lines on my rulers are the same where you have different levels of dashed lines to, um, to depict whether or not it's like a quarter inch increment, a half inch increment, a solid inch increment, a three quarter inch increment. So the dashes have different spacings in between them so that you can keep that in mind as you're making multiple cuts. 
which as quilters we typically do. Okay, but for the samosa, I have both of my square pieces of fabric facing up, one stacked on top of the other. I'm going to turn the 10 inch slicer ruler so that the narrowest edge is closest to my body, and then I'm going to align it along three sides, the bottom here, the left side, and the top. Just like that, okay? And then my Martelli mat, I love it. Because normally if you line it like that, you have to kind of like scoot your body over and go at it like this. So once I have my ruler in position, I'm going to spin this so that it gives me a more comfortable angle for my body to cut here. So I'm going to hold the ruler down and cut. Okay, I like to grab the fabric here off to the side and just separate it to make sure that I cut through the entire, you know, through all the layers and through every little thread of fabric. Okay, then that's what you have so far. And there are other quilt blocks designs that I have in the video uh, tutorial series for the 10 inch slicer where this is gives you a different block and stuff. So you can play around with the cuts. So that's that. Then I went like this. So now I'm going to go like this. So I'm going to take, let me see, where are you? Three. So the three, if you look for the three inch increment here, it's a solid line. My rulers have a solid line every time that there's a one inch increment. So at the one inch, the two inch, three, four, five, like that, they're solid. Those are, those lines are not dashed. And so I'm going to place that three inch solid line along the inside cut edge here of the piece on the right side, like that. And I'm bringing it all the way down to the bottom here, right there. Another thing that a lot of times people miss. Unless you have like a huge collection of rulers, I will get this, this comment from a lot of my customers and they'll say, I love that your rulers, the lines on your ruler are so thin. Because sometimes when you have thick black lines on your rulers, it's hard to see if the fabric underneath is truly aligned on the line. Mine are super narrow so that you can see exactly where you're placing it. So you can still see where the fabric is. And you know that if you go a little this way or a little that way, it's not on the line anymore. So it gives you a really precise um, line and measurement. Okay, so the way it works out is that that three inch solid line is there. You wanna be looking at what is underneath the ruler and it should be this little samosa chunk, this triangular piece. And then this edge of the ruler basically ends up splitting these right angle corner here of your fabric down the 45 degree diagonal. So if you position it like this, you're gonna be good to go. I'm going to turn my, my mat so that I can cut just up to there. Don't go through. That guy stays full size. These are the ones that we cut through, okay? So now, these are the pieces. So those are the two cuts. Now all I'm gonna do is take the little samosa piece, the top fabric goes under, and the bottom fabric comes up. And these are the pieces for two blocks. So I have pink, pink, and the pale blue. And underneath, it's pale blue, pale blue, getting matched up with the hot pink. Okay, so those two cuts on two squares give me everything I need to make two opposite blocks. And that way you get very minimal waste. It's just going to be what you trim away after you've pieced the block together. So super quick and easy. And I think it looks a whole lot better than just sewing a bunch of big chunky squares together. Okay. Um, Susan is asking, how many layers can you rotary cut through? So that's going to depend on you, how much pressure you can get down, how much strength you have to apply, how new the rotary cutter blade is, how big the rotary cutter blade is. I can usually cut through four easily, like just swipe through. If I go up to like six layers, I'm usually like really pressing down like little by little by little to make sure I get through all of them. So four layers for me feels fine, but if you can do two, that's still gonna get you, uh, you know, more quickly cutting uh, through the different blocks and stuff. And, and these types of projects, because it's the same repetitive motion and movement, you can set all your stuff up assembly line style. Take one day, say you're cutting yardage, cut up all your squares, set them up, lights, darks, lights, darks. Another day, come out and just make the cuts and just stack them high like this so that you can take your full stack to the sewing machine and piece the seams, you know, one at a time. But again, assembly line style. All right, so we're going to stitch up two blocks. So I want to show you two different ways to do it, one with pins and one with my favorite glue basting technique, okay? So first, let's go ahead and work on this one. So these are the three pieces. I'm going to work pink, pink with the pale blue here. Because this was just cut to the shape of the ruler of the 10 inch slicer, we're not messing with that yet. That's the last piece that's going to get added onto here because it's going to measure about the same. This needs to get sewn to this along this angled edge. So pretty sides touching. I'm just going to put this here. 
and remove it from the bottom layer. So I'm sewing along here. Let's go ahead and place pins first. I'm just going to put two pins here. Okay. And if the fabrics were cut correctly or they came at the right size and everything, it basically goes point to point. All right. And you know, when you're quilting, if you're sewing anything with any type of triangular point, you're going to have dog ears and things to trim. So don't freak out after you sew point to point. I have my sewing machine already set up for my quarter of an inch um, seam allowance, like a scant quarter inch. And there on this machine, it ends up being like a 5.5. Sometimes I can go to a six, but I'm just using the edge of my presser foot as my guide. I'm going to sink my fabric down. If you like to do your patchwork with leaders and enders, you can do that too. I don't really have too big of a problem here. Oh, what did I do? Do I have a different stitch selected or something? Let me turn this on. Maybe I hit the lock stitch button by mistake or something. Um, needle up. Let's move back to 5.5 is my needle position. Bobbin thread is up. All right. So did I hit this button instead of this? When I said sink the needle down, who knows? Okay. There we go. So just a scant quarter inch seam allowance. If you're going to do like a chunky quarter of an inch or maybe you're new to patch or quilting and stuff for this block, since you are going to clean it up as long as you're consistent, it's not going to really matter too much. So just be consistent with your seam allowance. And just remember the chunkier your seam allowance is, the more fabric you're wasting and eating up in the, in the seam. You know, if you want to really take advantage of the, the real estate of the front of the quilt top, then sew those quarter inch seams. Okay. So that's the first seam. This, um, I'm going to remove this cutting mat because we're going to use that. But here's my pressing mat. And I have my tailor's clapper. We do have them back in stock. So if you don't have one, you need it because it is a game changer for hems, sleeves, um, sleeve hems, the hems of the bottoms of tops, apron. What did we use it for recently here? On patch pockets, uh, patchwork pieces. I mean, everything. So I like to press my seams the same way that I sewed them. So I just leave it flat as it was sewn. Let's see. Oh, Patricia's asking about the pins I'm using. You know, these are some that I've been trying out lately and I love them. And I think we just got them in stock yesterday, so they haven't been added to the website yet. But I will, let me see if I talk about them next week once we can get them all added and, and see what we got and all that. All right. Now that I've pressed it just as it was sewn, we're going to press it, press the seam allowance in one direction. So you can press it down, you can press it to the dark, whatever you feel like doing. I'm just going to press this one down because the other side is going to be the pink. And then that long seam that comes across this way, I will press towards the dark. Okay, so here I'm going to press this way. If you're a big seam open presser, then you can do that too, okay? If you're, a, if you're an open seam kind of quilter, you can do that too. So once I press it that way, I just set my wooden tailor's clapper on it, and you'll see that as it cools, it just sets that seam beautifully. So crispy. I love it. Okay, so that's that. Now we're going to grab the piece that goes here so that we can sew this next seam. And yes, you do want to press after the seam. You don't want to sew the whole thing together and then try to press because this is a partial seam and you won't really be able to get it really good if you do it after. So now let's see what's going on. When you take the remaining piece, because this one was not shrunk down, remember this one was because we have a seam here. So we ate up a quarter of an inch from this fabric and a quarter of an inch from this one. So it's shorter than what this is because we haven't done anything to this yet. Okay. So what I want you to do is when you notice, where's my knitting needle? If you line it up like this, you'll see that it's a little longer here and a little longer here. Just split the difference. Okay. Let it stick out about a quarter of an inch there and let it stick out about a quarter of an inch there. Then flip one on top of the other pretty sides touching and align it along this edge. It's going to be offset a little bit here because remember underneath we had like a triangular point sewn to the other triangular point and you have dog ears. So this is like a little offset. It's not a big deal. Okay. Just go ahead and what I like to do, if you're using the pinning method, just place a pin at the beginning, the middle and the end, or even just at the beginning and at the end, somewhere in that area. So it doesn't move on me. 
somewhere in this area. And then I always follow the top edge for my seam allowance, okay? So it's this top edge. So even though I can kind of see a little bit of fabric from that little dog ear bit that's sticking out there, I'm still gonna follow the fabric that is on top with the uh, edge of my presser foot, okay? So here we go. Let's take it back to the sewing machine. I love this that I don't have to mess up my pieces here. I can just pop that off and get to pressing right underneath. So that Martelli mat is great, especially if you have a small space or if you work in an area. For me, for these demos, it's perfect because I don't have to, you know, have different camera angles. Everything can be moved and positioned right there. Okay. Oh, awesome. I see um, Jamila says, I've never done this. I'm learning now. Awesome. I hope you're getting some good tips. So we're going to do the same thing. Sink my needle down and just use the edge of my presser foot as my guide. Pull my pins as I go because I do not want to sew over them. And then, you know, you can just slow down your machine a little bit so that you can help keep things nice and straight. Okay. Obviously, this takes a little bit because I'm going one block at a time. Again, if you set your stuff up assembly line style before you know it, like in the time it'll take me to do one or two blocks, you can have like eight because they're all going to be at the same step if you do them like that, okay? You just sew the, and the seams are not long. They're quite short, so it doesn't take long at all. So let's cut and trim our threads. Again, we press the same way that it was sewn. And then now this is a longer seam, so I want that seam allowance going towards the dark. So now I'm going to press this way, okay? And I just grab the tip of my ruler, insert it there so I have no fabric bubbling up on me, and just kind of side swipe it over. Not too much or too hard because you don't want to distort the fabric, but if you're a fabric starcher like me, you won't have that problem. <laughs> that starch really holds everything flat. Those of you that pre-wash your fabric and don't use starch will have super, like, really drapey fabric, so that fabric can more easily be manipulated and stretched out. So just be careful with that, depending on what prep work you did for your fabric. Okay. Oh, awesome. Hey, Kaylee. She says, I'm just getting back into sewing after taking about a three-year break. I found your channel, and I'm loving what you do. Well, welcome. We are glad to have you here. And I have, like, I don't know, 600-plus tutorials on YouTube, so definitely check them out. I even have a playlist, a video playlist called Beginner Sewing Projects or something, and that would be a great place to start with, you know, smaller amounts of fabric, small, cutesy little projects that you can make. All right, so here is what we have. Let me slide this guy off. Here is what we have. And yes, it looks wonky. You're thinking I did something wrong. You did it. It's just because you start off with a solid square instead of pre-cutting the individual components of your quilt block, okay? So all we have left to do is to trim it up. That's it, square it up. So for me, and you can decide, do you wanna show more of this background fabric? And so you can clean off the bottom here. For me, I want the most of my little samosa piece, so I rather trim from the top, which is a lot of this kind of background fabric expanse that we have going on. So the first thing I do is, I love my little rotating mat, way easier to rotate than some of the others I've had. Okay, oh, this is another thing. The 10 inch slicer, because it has a 90 degree angle here on one side, and it measures all the way up to the 10 inches, you can use that corner, okay, to square up your quilt blocks as well. But because I have my five inch by 10 inch ruler, I'm gonna use this one too, because it's just a solid rectangle, so it's a little bit easier for me here. Okay, so I'm lining this up along the bottom edge of the little triangular samosa chunk so that I don't cut from it. I'm just cutting away whatever is sticking out beyond it, which is that and that. So we'll, let's keep an eye on our waist and see how much waist we have with the ruler, okay? So boom, that's already cut there. So if I measure now my quilt block up to this one, because remember, this is the shortest one, so you can't trim this one up to that height, right? You're always gonna trim to whatever the shortest, the lowest section is, so that everything ends up being nice and straight and even, okay? So if I measure from here to here, my block measures just over nine and a half inches. So that's what I'm gonna trim it to. 
Okay, makes sense? So that I'm still trimming it even all the way across the top, but it's um, not going to give me that much waste. All right? So let me make sure here. Nine and a half. And I'm just going to cut it in two chunks since I'm using this shorter ruler. So we're going to go nine and a half. Slide my ruler up. Realign everything again with nine and a half and finish cutting it off. So, let me not throw away my scraps. I want y'all to see how much waste, okay? So that's the waste from one block. You would, of course, unless, say your, your square pieces you started off with were like wonky already to begin with, or you didn't really cut very accurately if you're cutting from yardage yourself, then you may wanna go in and make sure that everything is consistent in the other way too. So for me, this measures nine and a quarter perfectly across this way, and then I just trimmed it down to nine and a half. So if I do exactly what I've done to this block with all my others, I know that I can easily have exactly about the same amount of waste, and all my blocks will measure nine and a quarter by nine and a half, okay? Remember, what did I say? The, the pre-cut scores, since oftentimes they're like a little bit shorter, I think those blocks, like the ones in the quilt that I showed y'all before, these ones ended up measuring, I think I trimmed them nine inches to not, by nine and a half, something like that. So if you're just tuning in, this is what we are working on, the Samosa quilt blocks that I um, cut up from my, using my 10 inch slicer ruler from 10 inch by 10 inch square pieces of fabric. They can be pre-cut stacks that you buy, or they can be 10 inch squares that you cut yourself. So look, not bad. Not bad, okay? Very minimal waste, and that's what you'll have from each of those, even if you cut out from yardage. And so I actually went ahead and saved what I had left over also from cutting down yardage into my 10 inch squares. Remember that earlier in the demo today, we were talking about the width of the fabric, and I told you that most quilting cottons run 40 to 45 inch width, okay, from selvage to selvage. And so if you cut 10 inches, then you can turn it and subcut 10 inches across the width of the fabric and cut your own squares. So from one 10 inch wide strip of fabric, this is what I had left over. I got four squares from each 10 inch by width of fabric chunk, and this is the scraps that I had left over. If you really didn't want to waste anything, I mean, obviously these are still great rectangular strips that you can use for anything, really, but you could even piece all of these together and maybe even end up with binding or just piece them together and make a matching uh, pillow right? Matching pillow cover that goes with the quilt that you're working on. So I think even if you are cutting out your own 10 inch square pieces from yardage, you don't really have much waste, especially if you're making this block with my 10 inch uh, slicer ruler. Okay. So that's how I would do it if I'm using pins. Let's go ahead and grab the other pieces so that we can make another block real quick using the glue basting method. Okay. Let's slide these guys onto the ironing mat. Now for the glue basting technique, I use just Elmer's White Washable School Glue, and you know that the tip that comes on it is one of these, all right? And what I do is replace that orange tip with these tips that I buy from my friend Laura's Etsy shop. This is all stainless steel. Everything is screw on top, the plastic and everything. If for some reason you leave the top off and the glue dries here, all you got to do is unscrew the different compartments, um, run them under a little bit of warm water since the glue is washable, and it'll just dissolve right there, let it dry out, and then you can put it back on. But the whole thing just screws onto the top of your uh, white washable Elmer's glue. We'll put a link to where you can get these tips in the video description, and we'll put it in the chat box right now for y'all if you're watching live, okay? So this little metal pin goes into it to keep that unclogged, right, when you're not using it. But this is what I would use because you have such a fine tip here. It's going to help ensure that you don't get huge globs of glue because you don't want that. And this is something I see people do all the time. And then they gum up the, the, the needle on their machine or it's super chunky. And when it dries, it's super hard. And when they try to sew through it, the machine is like, like trying to go through almost plastic. You know what I mean? It's a very, very minimal dot. And I'll show you exactly what I'm going to do. Okay, this way, this way, this way. So again, you gotta sew these in this order. This goes to here. So instead of pins, bring my glue down, a dot, skip like an inch or two, a dot, a dot, a dot. Don't my kids say a dot? I think that's like a video game thing. A dot, or football, when they throw the ball 
right on the money. They say a dot, a dot, okay? Now that I've put a couple dots on one edge, I'm going to take the other one over it. Pretty sides touching, point to point. Notice what I'm doing. This is a great tip for anything that you're trying to align two edges of fabric right up side by side. Instead of picking it up and repositioning and picking it up and repositioning, scratch the fabric back. That's going to allow you way more control and it allows you to just scoot it like one thirty second of an inch, which is oftentimes what we need. I just want to pull it back a little till it's right on edge with the pink. I'm going to press with my finger just to make sure it does not move on me. and then you're gonna press it. You don't want steam, okay? You just are gonna set that glue with the heat of a hot, dry iron. What this is gonna do is dry the glue, and it dries it in just seconds because it was such a teensy little dot of glue that I used. So now look what happens. I don't have pins. You can store this project for later if you are doing it assembly line style. Keep a whole stack. You can take it with you on the go without you know, using all your pins to hold things. And there it is. So now we'll take it to the sewing machine and stitch this up. So this is called glue basting. Okay, we've been doing this. Whoo, I think we're going on 10 years, maybe 10, 12 years. Some people, every time I show that, there, there's a lot of new people to it that have never heard of it. It does not gum up your needle. If you use a tiny dot of glue and set it and dry it with the heat of the dry iron, you won't have any issues. Okay, so let me see where I am. I'll do it from this side. Let's sink the needle in the project. Now my stitch length for patchwork is usually between 2 and 2.5 millimeters. So for this project, I have it set to 2.2. Uh, I hadn't mentioned that yet, and I know. I usually do so that people, you know, start getting ideas of stuff. For quilting, I don't like to use long, straight stitches. I want all my Patrick pieces, especially if they have like odd angles and I want really, really precise stuff. I don't want too much space between those stitches. So I go small on that stitch length. All right, so I'm pressing it just as it was sewn. Open it up. And what did I do last time? I think I pressed to the light. I can't even remember. It doesn't really matter because you can't even see the pink shining through that light fabric. Then I press here and then we're gonna set it with the clapper. Okay, that's that. Then we grab the other one. This is gonna go here. I've turned it so I can split the difference here and here. It's a little bit easier to do when you have it on top here. So there and there, and then I'm gonna scoot it. So I split the difference. I have a little bit, about a quarter of an inch sticking out here and about a quarter of an inch sticking out here. So because we're doing the glue basing technique, again, scratch it back out of the way so that I can put my bitty dots. A dot, oh, a bubble. I don't want that bubble in there. Just a dot, a dot. It's barely anything. I mean, even if you did this for one of these small bottles, you're gonna have it for years and years. A bubble. Okay. Then I'm gonna pick it up on either end and just scoot it right up top. Okay, pat it into place and then just hit it with the heat of a dry iron to set the glue. All right. So there it is. Ta-da! It's all held together. And the glue, don't worry about if you're giving this to charity or for a gift or whatever it is because it's washable. So usually we wash our quilts anyways, right, before we gift them you're not going to have any residual glue left in there, especially at such a small amount. Just wash the quilt and you'll be good to go. All right, so let's stitch this seam up. That's ah, a quick seam. All right. Bring this over just a hair. That's why I like to pat it down too when I um, hit it with the iron because sometimes the weight of the iron and the, the, the wet glue, the fabrics will like, sh like slide a little bit off of it. So it helps to pat it down first so you make contact with the glue in between the fabric layers and then go in and hit it with the iron to set the glue. Do, do, do. Thread snips, where have you gone? Here you are. Okay. 
And I'm using a gray thread, which is typically my go-to. It's 100% cotton gray thread. Gray thread just goes really well, especially for me, since I love tons of colors in my projects. You're not really going to sit there and match every seam with whatever color the fabric is, right? Because if you're using a short stitch length, you're not even going to see the seam or the stitches, so it doesn't really matter. I find that a gray is an amazing neutral to use. If you're using light, mediums, and darker fabrics, the gray just really, really works nicely. And um, it's a lot cheaper to have a couple shades of gray than it is to have a ton of shades of every color <laughs> to try and match things up. All right. Great, so let's give the whole block a press. Okay, bring back the cutting mat, and let's trim it up. Same thing, I'm gonna use the, the 10 inch slice through the same ruler that we used to make the block. We'll line it up down here, straight edge along the side edge of the block, the other straight edge along the, whoop, the bottom edge of the block here to trim. Okay. Where is my other ruler? That's what happens. Even when you have all your stuff in front of you, they still disappear. What? Am I blind? Oh, here it is. <laughs> no idea what I did with it. Okay. So we are trimming this to nine. What did I say? So this is nine and a quarter. So this is nine and a half. Okay. Nine and a half. And just make notes because based on what seam allowance you use, the size of the squares that you started off cutting with, um, all that stuff can vary. So usually when you make a quilt, right, they'll tell you make all the quilt blocks and then measure each one. And then you find like the smallest size. So like the shortest one, you take that measurement and you trim all your blocks to that same size so that they will all match when you go to sew them together into the different rows and columns, okay? So again, it's all about just being consistent. And then this for me is nine and a quarter, so I can stand to shave a little. Off of here, I'm gonna clean this side up. And I would say when you're trimming up, if that's something that's new to you, stay to the side of like not trimming a lot. Because sometimes if you trim and then you're like, oh no, I trimmed like three eighths of an inch off of this one. Then sometimes you feel like you have to go in and trim all of them even smaller, even smaller, even smaller. And then yes, they will be square. Yes, they will be perfect. But you'll have wasted so much one time and two fabric, just leave it in there. If it's like less than an eighth of an inch and you know that you'll be able to just suck it up in a seam allowance somewhere, just leave it, okay? It's not worth the extra headache and work and nobody's gonna know it. Okay, so this is just sticking out a little on this side, the rest is fine. All right, so we have that one. We have this one that I had done before. And we have, where's my pink one? Here, this one that we did using the pins. Okay, so you can see that if you were to stack these up two layers, four layers, four squares at a time, or even two squares at a time, you could make a ton of these blocks assembly. Ooh, yeah, don't want to yank on that. A ton of these blocks assembly line style. All right, and then in the quilt that I showed you previously, I'm just going to show you with an example of these or two of these blocks, the way that I aligned them. Instead of just having them side by side, so uh, let's talk a little bit about these design, um, like design ideas and things that you can play around with if you make these blocks. If you cut your own 10 inch by 10 inch square pieces of fabric from two yards, or two fabrics, I should say, from yardage of two yards, you can make a bunch of blocks that are literally opposite of each other and just alternate them. I could have like one main pink, one main light blue, one main pink, one main light blue. And that is a super quick, easy, and cute quilt to whip up with just two fabrics instead of you know, digging through your stash. I need a print that goes with this one. I need a solid or whatever. So like this, 
because they're cut to the same measurements or trimmed to the same dimensions, you can also go like this. The key is going to be that the height needs to be remain the same because since they are not square, you can't go like this. Does that make sense? So if you are someone who wants to have the ultimate um, choice on how you're orienting each one of the blocks, then you could go ahead and trim them all to squares and then you could really play because this little samosa chunk can be on the right edge, it could be on the bottom edge, it could be on the left edge, it could be at the top edge. I mean, you can totally play around with it if it was a square, right? If you're keeping the dimensions like I have in rectangular form, then just this way, one down, one up, or all down, or all up. So. I still think that's a lot of options with very minimal waste, as you saw from each different little block. Okay. So that is how you make the Samosa quilt block. And remember that I have a six part free video series on how to make the entire quilt. You can go ahead and put them back on my face so I can show this in bigger screen. So like this, okay, and I walk you through every single step on how to cut the pieces, some mirror image tips on how I orient them, how I come up with design, you know, like all that kind of stuff. I walk you through, I think there's even a video on how I quilted it. So um, six part free video series. If you just do a Google or YouTube search for uh, Crafty Gemini Samosa Quilt Along, it'll pop right up. It's on my website and you can watch that video playlist and give it a go. I think this is a, a quick little palette cleanser of quilts, uh, and you just need 10 inch squares and my 10 inch slicer ruler. All right, so thank you everybody for tuning in. I hope that some of you will try it. Yep, yep, it is still washable. We talked about the glue. All right, everybody, so enjoy the rest of your week. I hope you give it a try. Remember, you can always shop with us online at our online shop. It's craftygemini.com slash shop. And if you're not subscribed to my email newsletter and you want to be in the loop of everything we have going on, and the next time that I open up my Bag Maker subscription box program, which is coming up again since we're finishing up the first round right now, uh, make sure that you head over to craftygemini.com. You'll see a pop-up there for where you can enter your email address and get added to our email newsletter. It is the best way to stay in touch and know what we have going on. All right. Thanks. Have a great weekend and I will see y'all next week. Bye.